Hey y'all, it's Teresa with One Love One Light. Well, welcome to your week of fortune. So we're gonna do all signs. Let me just shuffle up. Um, someone asked me why I wasn't doing it live and it's because I can't get in the chat. So I'm just gonna do this as a premiere so that I can get in the chat and answer any questions about the readings, about the cards, um, pretty much anything you want to ask. And we're going to do each sign starting with Aries. Happy birthday, Aries. So I'm shuffling now and then I'll just pull from this deck and I'll shuffle each time with the tarot so let's see how this plays out this week of fortune all right Aries what do we have for Aries and we have the sea goddess of courage authentic communication so that's number 26 that could be significant for you but let's read what number 26 has to say. I am appearing to you as a sign from your deep soul calling for comfort and compassion as you step into a new chapter of your life. You have been ready for this for a long time and although knowing this doesn't make it easier, it does affirm that you are a powerful manifester and now need to embody the frequencies of courage. It is deep within you and can come to the surface when you thought it was non-existent. Trust and allow me to support you through whatever it is you are moving through. I am here to guide you and am sending you waves of courage to take extraordinary leaps of faith toward your inner truth. So there's something that you are, you may have been like feeling a prompting in inside to do something, but there has been fear. So now it's about, um, it's about really gathering up that courage and whether you're still in fear or not operating despite that fear. And we also have trust. So this is also trusting in yourself, trusting in God, trusting that things are going to play out. You're protected, you're guided, and you're comforted through this time. This is about trusting that you're str <clears throat> strong enough. That's what I'm getting to. As far as authentic communication, this is about having the courage to really um, express your truth. And let's see what else we get. We have the Ace of Swords. Yeah, really expressing your truth. This is guiding you as well, pointing you in the right direction, pointing you in the direction where you can be authentic, where you don't feel, um, where you don't feel persecuted for what you believe in. What else do we have? And we have the Knight of Pentacles. So I feel like this is really you've been cautious and it's out of fear you don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past but this is also let me just scoot these over a little bit so we can see this a little more clearly and i feel like this is a caution out of fear but this is telling you to have courage and trust and we have the will of fortune this is part of your destiny this is divine timing something you've been preparing for for a long time and you're finally ready and the mo positive momentum is starting to spin um, quicker and quicker. The bottom of the deck is the five of swords. So there's definitely been um, some people that have been less than supportive to you in the past. And I feel like um, that's kind of where you've gotten cut or burned in the past has created this fear. So I feel like um, you're going to overcome that. Don't let the past define your future. All right, what guidance do we have? And we have gratitude. May you honor all that you receive. So this is about appreciating what you do have, trusting in yourself, 
having gratitude for everything that you've been through because it's made you who you are today. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back and so do I. Take care. Taurus, Taurus, what do we have for Taurus? And we have Lemurian Sea Sanctuary, Remembrance. So this is like remembering who you've been in previous lives, knowing that your ancestors, there were Lemurian ancestors in your bloodline, and this is about remembering the power and the way of life that the Lemurians established on Earth. So let's see what number seven has to say. The Lemurian Sea Sanctuary is a sanctuary to honor the crystalline light bodies of the Lemurian teaching left behind in crystallized form. The vibrations of the sacred space are so high they sound like crystal bowls and angels singing, and the lightness of the energy is pure, innocent, and playful. This is the perfect place to retreat to when you are feeling lost and downtrodden to revive your soul spirit essence and remember why you actually decided to come to earth in the first place. Access this powerful haven through the sacred sea. So I feel like this is accessing it through your emotions. This is about remembering the power that you once had or that is empowered to you by the Lemurians. And we have be spontaneous. So this is also requiring some trust. Be spontaneous. Be able to trust yourself enough to um, go through things without having a plan always. So this is about uh, spontaneity, but it's also about serendipity. So being able to recognize opportunities that present themselves spontaneously. All right, let's see how this is playing out for Taurus. What else do we have, Holy Spirit, for Taurus? And we have the Six of Wands. So you will be victorious. You. This is like a sudden um, victory where you weren't planning, you know, a particular competition or battle or conversation or situation. This is about you rising to the occasion. What else do we have? And we have the Three of Pentacles. So it may not be something that you do all on your own, but this is like a spontaneous connection, um, connection with a social circle, um, really standing out because you are talented, you are um, powerful, and you are confident. What else do we have? And we have the Ace of Swords. So yeah, I feel like you're being prompted to go in the right direction. This is about being spontaneous in the sense that you see signs and you allow them to guide you. You trust in the universe. You trust in your own intuition. I feel like at the bottom of the deck, the magician, yeah, you have everything you need to create the life and, and reality that you want to experience. So let's go ahead and get some guidance here. What guidance do we have? And we have soothe. May you settle gently even as the wave breaks above. So yeah, it's like um, you're finding contentment where even when there's crashing things going on around you. That's what I'm getting here. Sorry, I'm scooting up here. So those are the messages, Taurus. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back and so do I. Take care. Sip of coffee. Puff on the vape. Alrighty.
And we have Gemini. Gemini. What do we have, Holy Spirit, for Gemini? And we have the Dolphin Spirit, number 32. Activate more bliss. So this is about living in the moment, allowing that inner child to really live, experiencing joy and fun and experience, really experiencing each situation scenario in its lightest form, in the highest vibration. So let's read what number 32 has to say. You are connecting to the dolphin spirit who has a message for you that can activate the bliss frequency within you and anyone else you come into contact with. The dolphin spirit is calling on you to lighten your spirit, lift your mood, and find more feelings of gratitude that can instantly raise your vibration. It is up to you to create more playful moments in your life. The power for play lies in your hands. The dolphin spirit is multidimensional. Sea and earth being who reminds you that you are made of the same cosmic matter it is and that you are the infinite creator of your experience. When you see dolphins playing in the ocean or even in your dreams, it is a sign you are in need of more fun. So design this into your calendar straight away. So it's definitely saying you need that. You need time for play. This is about work-life balance and understanding that there is a priority that you need to make towards this bliss energy. And we have relaxation. So yeah, definitely um, needing a time out is what I'm getting. You're overworking or you are too involved in what's going on around you and you need to basically take time to yourself to kind of rest, rejuvenate, and be able to experience bliss again. Things have gotten way too serious. Life is short and it's, um, it's a matter of enjoying the experiences that you're creating. All right, we have two cards that came out. We have Judgment, and we have the Ace of Pentacles, beautiful. So I feel like this is kind of looking back on your life and you may be seeing all the negative things that have happened to you in the past and it's like a heavy burden here, but this is about now letting go of those things and recognizing that these were all um, here to shape you into the person that you are now. You've had victories, you've had losses, but um, all were lessons that you were meant to learn. And with this Ace of Pentacles, it's like a brand new beginning. I feel like this has to do with your life purpose. You're getting this wake up call that there is a brand new way to experience life, to be abundant, to um, create prosperity without draining your, your soul, you know? What's the outcome here? And we have the star, beautiful. So this is healing. This, this bliss um, vibration is going to bring healing. It's going to restore your faith. It's going to feel like you're being guided towards your wishes coming true. And I feel like this is about wishing big, wishing on a star. The bottom of the deck is strength card. Yeah, I feel like you need to rebuild your strength and also acknowledge the inner wisdom and strength that you've developed over the years. So this is a beautiful message here. Let's see what guidance we have. What guidance do we have? And we have reveal. May openness lead you to connection. So this is about being vulnerable and allowing um, your heart to be open to connection and this high vibration. So those are the messages that came through for you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care. All right, Gemini. No, we did Gemini. Cancer. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we have Botanical Sea Temple, Blooming Opportunities. Wow. 
So there's definitely big things that are coming your way, big opportunities, um, things that are going to make you flourish and be abundant and fertile. It's like the Empress card is what I'm getting. So let's see what number nine has to say. If I can find it. All right. The Botanical Sea Temple is the majestic home to all of the marine fauna on the planet. All the seeds from all time are kept safe here. It is also the dream creation space for new types of marine and land plant life to sprout and bloom for the very first time. Once it is cultivated here, it will begin to grow in the most appro appropriate parts of Earth. This is a sacred place where you can visit in your visualizations as a place of refuge, healing, and inspiration. Access the portal to this extraordinary sea temple. So what I'm getting to is that there's something that you're creating that may may not have existed before. This could be at your job or in your, um, you know, in a side hustle or some type of um, hobby, but you're creating something original. That's what I'm getting here. And we have gratitude. So gratitude for the opportunities, gratitude for your abundance, gratitude in all things, being thankful, even in the worst situations. There's lessons to be learned. There's a silver silver lining somewhere there in that um, chaos. All right, Holy Spirit, what else do we have for cancer? And we have the tower. So this is something that I feel like this opportunity is going to change your life. It's going to really, um, it may feel like an upheaval at first, but it's giving you something where you can really build a solid foundation after all is said and done. So this could be anything. This could be you blowing up on social media. This could be the opportunity of a lifetime being presented to you. This could be going for an interview and really um, bringing your courage and confidence like you never have before. What else do we have? And we have the hero font. So this is a major time for you. This is something that you've worked really hard for. This is also about what you believe in and connecting. I see her praying there. I feel like you're connecting to God, to spirit, to the divine. But this is something that's long-standing, a long-standing commitment. You may have an opportunity to sign a contract of some sort that's really going to benefit you. And we have justice. Wow, all major arcana. So this is like a reward or a payoff for everything. The, the universe always balances things out. It's just in divine timing. So this is about having gratitude for everything because it's earned you this reward. The bottom of the deck, wow, the Empress. And I said that was like the Empress. This is you blowing up. This is you glowing up. And this is you um, having the sun, sun on your back and the star in the sky. That's what I'm getting here. All right, what guidance do we have? Major, major time for you, Cancer. And we have lightness. May the light lift you to the surface. And for those of you that have been watching the dailies, we've been getting the Empress a lot. And it's really about letting go of burdens and living that life light. You know, like being in a high vibration, which attracts more abundance and attracts more things to be grateful for. So those are the messages that came through for you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe and remember the universe has your back and so do I. Take care. Leo, what do we have for Leo, Holy Spirit? And we have Sea Goddess of Abundance. Celebrate abundance. Beautiful. So we're always looking for abundance. We're always wanting to feel fulfilled, secure, taken care of, and um, independent. Not always, you know, being taken care of, but knowing that 
the divine is taking care of us. What does number 25 have to say? The sea goddess of abundance urges you to activate your awareness with regard to your emotions. Your emotions are speaking to you and you must listen. She is a goddess, a sensual activation priestess who has come to assist you as you connect to your divinity and honor every emotional aspect of yourself. It is imperative that you allow this awakening to be revealed to your consciousness. You are a powerful manifestation of your exact reality. Listen very closely to what your emotions are revealing and what they cause you to think about and act out, which will provide clear clues to what is blocking or trapping you from fully allowing your own desires to come flying into your life experience. If you set intentions regularly and want to see more of them manifest in abundance, keep your face strong and trust that you have done the work. Sit back in joy of all you have in this current moment. Gratitude is key. Make it playful, fun, and energizing for the best results. And I just feel like that is so um, meaningful for Leos right now. It's just like something that um, is part of your core, that, that heart chakra. That's what I'm getting here. And we have go with the flow. So I do feel like there are things presenting themselves, but only if you kind of let go and be in the lightness, be in that flow, um, not fighting or trying to control the situation, allowing things to come to you that have been meant for you. All right, what else do we have? Holy Spirit, what else do we have for Leo? And we have the King of Swords. So this, I feel like, has been you being very logical, being very intellectual. And I feel like this is a part of you, but this is just all mind and no emotion. Here you're being asked to connect to that emotion. Because it will reveal ways of abundance, ways to... Um, manifest and really what you truly desire, not what um, maybe we're programmed to want in life. What else do we have? And we have the Nine of Swords. So definitely been in your head way too much and trying to control situations that are out of your control. This can be very difficult. It can cause anxiety. Um, it can cause nightmares. It can really... Um, kind of keep you down, keep you in low vibration. All right, what else do we have? And we have the Ace of Cups, beautiful. This is all about feeling your emotion, filling your cup, really loving yourself, having self-love, and being emotional about situations, allowing yourself to be emotional, going with the flow, allowing your cup to be filled. The bottom of the deck, we have the Queen of Swords. So I do feel like this is saying, you know, trust your intuition. You can still have foresight and use your smarts. This is about connecting heart and mind. All right, what is the guidance that we have for Leo? What guidance do we have for Leo? And we have clear. May you see things as they are. And I feel like that is going with the flow and letting things calm so that you can sort things out, so that you can understand um, this path to abundance. All right. Those are the messages that came through for you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care. Virgo, Holy Spirit, what do we have for Virgo? And we have Sea Queen Diamond Light, Unify Passions. Wow. Let's see what that one has to say. Number 21, Unify Passions. Interesting. Interesting means I have no idea exactly what they're trying to say. <laughs> <clears throat> I am the sea queen of diamond light, abundance, wealth, and soul nourishment. I am the keeper of infinite soul source creative energy. 
With your overflowing abundance, you can choose to be illuminated with the experience of fully receiving and fully giving of the plethora of your innate gifts. The trick is to find authentic and unique ways to integrate all aspects of things you are passionate about doing and find pathways of service through the unification of them all. This is the code you now have access to unlocking so you can experience the gifts the Sea Queen of Diamond Light has in store for you. So I feel like this is saying like you're going to create this path of abundance by, um, by seeking things that you can um, make a living off of that are pa that you're passionate about. So this is like, you may have all this abundance, but are you truly fulfilled? This is about seeing your life purpose. All right, we have awareness. So yeah, I feel like this is coming into the awareness of your gifts. This is about coming into the awareness of your life purpose, your destiny, and really going after those things that bring you passion that you can um, put together and make something that is creative and beautiful and is something you can make money with. So this could be a spiritual business. This could be anything that you're passionate about. So Holy Spirit, what else do we have for Virgo? We have the Five of Wands. So yes, there's going to be competition. There's going to be struggle to get things off the ground. But I feel like this is still um, part of your destiny and you're meant to push through and make it happen. What else do we have? And we have the Six of Cups. Yes, this is like a gift from God. This is something that is really bringing you fulfillment and joy. I'm getting like... Um, this is um, coming into that inner child and really rewarding and acknowledging some of the things that you have desired your whole life, that you have memories of wanting to be this when you grew up, that you have left behind and now is coming back into your awareness. What else do we have? And we have the three of wands. So this is really looking at your future and seeing things the way that you want them to be and what it's going to take to get there. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Cups. So this is really trusting your intuition, understanding that, um, that things are emotionally and um, intuitively connected. Some things are and some things aren't, and it's time to leave behind those things that are not, that you're not passionate about. All right, what else do we have? What guidance do we have? And we have forgive. May you let it be. Okay, so this there's something that will really heal you if you can forgive. This could be forgiving yourself, forgiving someone else. This could definitely be something where you're forgiving um, the divine for situations that you feel um, you've been in that you didn't deserve. Okay, so this is about recognizing that, forgiving yourself and understanding that you create your reality and this has been all to teach you lessons and make you the person you are. We're getting that message a lot today, so I feel like we're all um, in a place that we are evaluating what we've been through, where we've had victories, where we've had losses, and this is also about forgiveness and compassion for yourself and others. So those are the messages that came through today. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care. Need coffee. Holy Spirit, what do we have for Libra? And we have the Manta Ray Mother, Compassionate Kindness, number 12. So anything where we're talking about mother, this is like nurturing. This is um, 
building up others and and being a role model that's what i'm getting here let's see what number 12 has to say I am the manta ray mother holding messages and frequencies of inner peace, bliss, joy, epic angelic support, and larger than life love for you right now. As the large glorious mother nurturer of the sea, I am here to envelop you in the infinite joyful love of the great divine mother. Imagine the largest and most comforting mothering essence coming into your energy field and hugging your soul. She helps you release and relinquish the controlling, hyper-fearful parts of yourself that are impeding your freedom to access great joy. I am here to gently bring you awareness of the controlling grip you have on your life as it is a lower vibration than your soul wishes to vibrate at, and it keeps you in survival energies and experiences. Breathe deeply to release your tight grip and feel the blood and life force energy flow effortlessly back into your body. And I feel like we all need this sometimes, that nurturing, that feeling that we're being carried, that we're being cared for, supported, and have that, un, um, why can't I think of the word, unconditional love. <laughs> all right, let's see what else comes out. And we have waiting. So I feel like um, this is like kind of feeling stuck and like you're waiting for a sign. You're waiting for a person, a situation to change. And I feel like even in the times that we are meant to be patient, we still have to be taking action. We still have to keep moving because we will get stagnant. So this is about not, not resting down and waiting for something to happen. Having patience that things will manifest, but also continuing to do things that grow you and expand you. All right, what else do we have for Libra? Holy Spirit, what else do we have for Libra? Okay, and we have the Fool. So this is about taking that leap of faith. And this is like the child. So just know that you are being guided and comforted and protected by this mothering energy. This is about not waiting. This is about taking that leap of faith and knowing that you will be um, you will be caught when you jump, you know, by the divine, by God. What else do we have? And we have the nine of cups. Your all your wishes coming true, total emotional fulfillment. And this is something that you've been working towards, but it's almost like this last step needs to take place and you've been waiting, maybe out of fear, maybe out of feeling like you are counting on someone else for your wishes to come true. And this is really telling you to take that leap that don't wait. All right, what is the outcome here? And we have the Queen of Swords. Yes, so I feel like this is... Um, a little bit cold energy and it's about opening up to that warm comforting energy allowing it in it's going to be the um, game changer for you the bottom of the deck is the four of swords so this mothering energy is also going to be very healing for you and I feel like at the very least if you are waiting for a situation rest and rejuvenate and regroup and connect with the divine in order to feel that connection and guidance all right what is the guidance here and we have free may your soul sing freely beautiful this is about really allowing your truth and your talents and your skills to sing for you this is also about embracing every day knowing that we're not promised tomorrow so those are the messages that came through for you thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please 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 subscribe and remember the universe has your back and so do i take care And we have Scorpio, Holy Spirit, what do we have for Scorpio? And we have Algae Medicine Mother, Consume Consciously. Number 13. Okay, this 
in here. <clears throat> You have activated the algae medicine mother for a deeper connection to the plants of the sea for their medicine, the essence for healing and regrowth of the body's cellular system. Look to the sea for nourishment in any way possible, whether it is soaking your body in the salt of the sea or wrapping yourself in seaweed for rejuvenation, as the ocean is filled with nutrient-rich, superfood-dense sustenance. Look at the sea's flora for healing from the inside out. The algae of the sea is filled with chlorophyll and can energetically and more closely connect you with your roots and past lifetimes. Your body may be craving more greens from the sea if you drew this card. Research and listen to your gut and intuition when searching for the right kinds of sea greens to fuel your body. By intentionally consuming these sea greens, you may even find that your consciousness is activated to connect more deeply with the sea in new ways. Be open, alert, and awake to the subtle changes you notice and feel upon consuming the rich superfoods of the sacred sea. So I do feel like this is really opening up your conscious and, and advising, advising you to connect more deeply with the sea and all it has to offer. All right, and we have breaking free. So I feel like there's something that... Um, that could really be healing about consuming um, sea products. So I feel like, um, or or going into sea water or getting a seaweed wrap. I feel like this is going to disconnect some negative cords that you have. But this is also about not feeling trapped, knowing that you can break free, giving you the courage and the strength to do so. All right, what else do we have? Oh, I need to shuffle. What else do we have for Scorpio, Holy Spirit? And we have judgment. So yeah, I really feel like this is giving you the opportunity to reflect and evaluate. I feel like this is a wake-up call. There's something that's going to open your eyes into something more beautiful and make you feel freedom. What else do we have? The tower, wow. So I feel like this is tearing down walls and really um, it's going to change your life in the positive way. It just may not feel like it at first. I feel like this is breaking down those things that no longer serve you, that are not a stable platform for you or a stable foundation for you to build upon. And it's gonna give you the opportunity to break free and rebuild into something more um, abundant, more prosperous, and more fulfilling for you. And we have the Two of Swords. So I feel like you have a choice in the matter. This is about a kind of fight within you, and I feel like disconnecting those cords and being free of this situation is the right choice for you. The bottom of the deck, the Nine of Swords. So I think that this is also breaking free, is letting go of trying to control the situation and also going with the flow. The Nine of Swords can really bring a lot of anxiety and overthinking a situation. And I feel like that's what's giving you this um, kind of conflict within. It's about trusting your intuition and finding ways to um, connect to the divine and receive their guidance. All right, what else do we have for guidance? What do we have? And we have magic. May you flow with the divine. Yeah, breaking free and really flowing. This is really showing the sea and the moon. This energy is all intuitive, emotional, and really connecting with the sea. Those are the messages that came through for you, Scorpio. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe and remember the universe has your back and so do I. Take care. Holy Spirit, what do we have for Sagittarius? And we have the seahorse spirit, create the unexpected. So uh, this could be something where you are um, kind of in a 
pattern of things and it's breaking out of that pattern. But let's see what the book has to say. Number 31. <clears throat> the seahorse spirit finds you now as you are ready to hear the quiet, subtle messages encoded in the spirit of this tiny, refined being. The time has come to shift the paradigm of your existence. What you are made of is the culmination of many intricate messages spun together into the neuronic skeleton that makes up your brain and all that you believe to be true. If you want to be set free, play with changing the circuits. Put things where they haven't been connected before and see what happens. Shake or spice things up, creating the unusual and unexpected so you can create a new spark in your life. The female seahorse does this when she implants her eggs into the male so he can become pregnant and carry the baby seahorses. So yeah, I feel like doing the unexpected and stepping out of the box, out of the comfort zone is going to be the most um, fruitful right now. And we have free spirit. So this could be letting go of control, going with the flow. I'm going to read this one as well because I like the description here. I may not read it all, but I'm going to read some of it here. Free spirit. The mermaid says it's fun to feel free. This doesn't mean shirking your responsibilities, though. It's important and pop and possible to find a balance between fulfilling your wild and free spirit while honoring your responsibilities, especially when others are involved or relying on you. Being a free spirit might kindle romantic thoughts of a nomadic lifestyle. Although this might not be practical for you, it's still worth considering ways you can express this desire. For example, by taking a backpacking holiday or simil similar. Do you feel free? Your work or home life might bring feelings of restriction. If this is true, take a look at how you can change things. And it's very long description there, but that's what I'm saying is how can you change things? How can you break out of the mundane? That's what I'm getting here. And I feel like you have the creative, um, thinking to really do this and still um, maintain your responsibilities and be um, going in unexpected directions that are going to be good. This could be, I definitely feel like this is at work, but this could be in um, your relationship. It could be um, in your family life as far as responsibilities go. All right, what else do we have, Holy Spirit for Satch? And we have the lovers. So that's confirming that this is a relationship, I feel like. It's connection. It's also about reflecting and seeing yourself in the way that you want to be seen. Um, acknowledging that part of yourself. Reflecting on the past. And also um, connecting to yourself. Connecting to others in an authentic alignment. And we have the fool. So yeah, this is that free spirit, not knowing what direction you're going, but still taking a leap of faith here. What else do we have? And we have the nine of pentacles, beautiful. So this is really that independence, that um, experiencing luxury, um, enjoying the fruits of your labor. You've gone through a lot. This is um, making that time to really enjoy everything you've worked so hard for. The bottom of the deck, we have the page of swords. So this could be some type of written document at work. This could be a conversation that you have with your lover. This could be anything that is kind of triggering this unexpected and free spirit. What guidance do we have? And we have held. May you feel the ocean's caress. So this is that fool card where you're feeling protected, guided, comforted, and knowing that you have um, the strength of God to go through you to accomplish any challenges that come your way. So those are the messages that came through for you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care.
right, Holy Spirit, what do we have for Capricorn? And we have Kundalini Sea Queen, Command Self Resilience. Okay, number 20. <laughs> oops, I'm in the wrong book here. Oops, 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 oops. All right, number 20. The Kundalini Sea Queen is here as an archetype typical example of what it means to embody your own life force energy. She is the representation of the great Kundalini energy that so many yearn to know within their own bodies. She has come to you in this reading as a signal that you are ready to open your own body and spirit to align with this vital life force energy that is lying dormant in you. Where have you played into the doormat archetype? She is calling on you to take inventory of your life, every aspect of it, to know where you must stoke the flames of your own inner fire. In which areas of your life can you take back your own power? When and with whom can you reclaim your strength? What areas have you let go of that you are ready to stand more powerfully in? When you take the time to do this regularly and devote your life to living in alignment with your core desired way of being, you can have access to your own multidimensional Merkaba, which can take you to new realms of understanding yourself and why you are here and what to do with your life while embodied in this destiny. Wow, this is huge. This is huge. This is like all the power and strength that you've created, all the wisdom everything like coming into utilization like you really are going to start using this taking back your power from situations and people that have kind of sucked it dry where have you been a doormat this is really beautiful and we have the future i feel like this is like really looking at how do you want your life to play out is it are you content now are you settling for things? This is about really changing now so that your future will change. It's like you change the present and you create a new future for yourself. All right. What else do we have, Holy Spirit, for Capricorn? And we have the Three of Wands. Yeah, looking at your future understanding what what you're due already what you've worked already hard for taking that expecting that and then kind of looking at where you're going to go next or what are you going to what are you going to change or what are you going to take back all right what else do we have and we have the two of cups where are you divinely connected what are you divinely connected to this could be definitely um, a relationship. Obviously, this is connection. But where have you lost yourself in those connections? Where can you truly be yourself and not hold anything back? What else do we have? And we have the Seven of Wands. Yes, things are going to come up against you. But you will have the higher ground. This is like still going towards things that you... Uh, believe in this is also knowing that you're going to have victory even if you have forces or energies that come up against you this is really standing up for what you believe the bottom of the deck we have the seven of cups and it can be overwhelming that's what I'm getting here but when you have a clear picture of what you want your future to look like and then let go of expectations of of exactly how it will look just work towards what you want. Be what you want in the present to create this beautiful future. All right, what guidance do we have? And we have begin. May you start as if you've already begun. And I'm getting like hit the ground running. Like you already have everything within you. Utilize that. That's what I'm getting here. So those are the messages that came through for you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe and remember the universe has your back and so do I. Take care. Aquarius, Holy Spirit, what do we have for Aquarius? And we have the sacred fish spirit, surrender to simplicity. 
Don't overcomplicate things. Don't try to um, make them too ornate or ostentatious. That's what I'm getting. But let's see what number 35 has to say. Sorry, I'm finding it. Okay. The sacred fish spirit has a message for you. I am surfacing from the deepest reef of the sacred sea to guide and honor you on your journey. You are being asked to create purpose for yourself and your life in the simplicity of your day, your breath, your food, your home, your bed, and your laughter. It is in your smallest moments, just as one fish is to one moment, when all moments link together as a school of fish does. This, these small moments add up to the sum of your life experience. The consciousness of these mundane actions and experiences can change your entire perspective of what life is and what you came to earth for. So very um, life purpose energy and understanding that even the little things add up to the big things. So small decisions, small um, comforts that you allow yourself, small um small ways that you breathe consciously that you are aware of let's see what else and we have innocence protect your innocence value your innocence and um give yourself compassion for those things that you don't know about um i kind of want to read the innocence at least a little bit in the book yeah i'm going to all right innocence I don't think I've read this before. This mermaid protects her heart for this is the home of innocence. This delicate yet paradoxically strong part of ourselves can feel or appear corrupted as we journey through life, yet in truth it's always pure. Innocence is a protection against the harshness and cynicism of life. Staying true to your innocent heart is the correct course of action. If you're caught up in a legal battle or a court case at the time this card appears in your reading, your innocence is highly likely to be revealed and upheld as long as you hold on to integrity and honesty. If this card appears alongside the truth card, the meanings of both will be amplified. Whatever you've done in life, remember that your soul is eternally in innocent. We all have the ability to connect with our original childlike essence of innocence, even in adult life. It, innocence has no age limit. It's a natural state of being that you can reclaim right now. So I'm getting like, yes, it's like um, going back to that innocent child within, but this is also recognizing that you have a pure heart. There's nothing that can change that. It's ego, it's mind and um, not trusting your intuition that leads you astray or that you need to have compassion for um, trying to navigate this corrupt world. You're still innocent within it. All right, what else do we have? And we have the Ace of Cups, loving yourself pure being pure um healing to yourself and others self i already said self-love this could be meeting someone new this could be just taking steps every day to um nurture yourself heal yourself and fill your own cup what else do we have and we have the king of cups so becoming emotionally stable um this could be also going to a counselor but I feel like this is where you're really mastering your emotions and understanding where you need to put that emotional energy and where you don't. All right, what else do we have? And we have the Ten of Swords. You've been betrayed in the past, but you've been innocent. This has all been um, a lesson for you to learn about humanity, about relationships, about who you connect with. And understanding that you could have seen this coming, but your innocence has um, protected you from seeing it coming, which in the end doesn't always protect you, but you learn, you learn to who you can trust and who you can't.
The bottom of the deck is the Two of Swords. So this is about not being able to see a situation clearly with your eyes. It's about looking at it from the perspective of a pure heart and trusting your intuition. All right, what guidance do we have? And we have Alive. May you delight in vitality. And that's where this... Um, uh, surrender to simplicity is being thankful and grateful and appreciative of every breath you take, of every morning you wake up, of every meal you partake in. I feel like this is where that gratefulness is going to um, intertwine in everything that you do. It's going to create that compassion and love that that we all need to really make life worth living, really experiencing things, and really fulfilling the purpose of why you are here. Those are the messages that came through for you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care. And last but not least, Holy Spirit, what do we have for Pisces? And we have the Sea Goddess of Self-Mastery Embodiment. All right, number 23. So 23 may be significant to you. I don't know why. Um, oops, did I pass it? Oh, here we go. It is time to remember, acknowledge, and celebrate your innate royalty, your masterful, masterful majesty within. This energy remains usually dormant, and this card is a sign that you are ready to awaken to your true self-mastery. Be bold and authentic to your essence, as it is above all else the most precious attribute you can possess and utilize to your advantage. As you powerfully manifest your creative visions on earth, Allowing celebratory acknowledgement will activate the truest embodiment. And when you fully trust that you've got this and you are doing what you came here to do and be and share with the world, you will be free. Wow. I have this feeling that this has to do with so much karma being released, being um, um, balanced and being cashed in, if you will. All right, what else do we have? Dreaming. So Pisces were known for daydreaming, for dreaming, but I feel like this is going to manifest in the physical. This is like your dreams coming true. This is also about actually believing things are possible. All right, Pisces. Holy Spirit, what else do we have for Pisces? And we have the Two of Wands. So this is about knowing that you have the world at your fingertips. Where are you going to go next? What are you going to do next? You have the choice to stay in your comfort zone. You also have the choice of embodying everything that you've learned and your own self-mastery and taking on a new venture. What else do we have? And we have the Eight of Cups. Yeah, going towards something that's more fulfilling, that is emotionally fulfilling. I feel like this is going towards what you've been dreaming of your whole life. What else do we have? And we have the Ten of Swords. This is the fear that you have, is that you'll be betrayed or that things won't go your way or that you know, you'll be attacked, that you're not protected. And this is telling you that you are protected. You are protected by the divine, and this is not how it will play out. This is overthinking situations. The bottom of the deck is the Eight of Pentacles. You've worked really hard for this. I feel like it's not just about, it is about magic, but it's also about everything that you've worked hard to do and you have overcome so much karma you have learned the lessons and you're ready to take off now all right what is the guidance for pisces what guidance do we have holy spirit and we have 
present. May you sense each shiver of the surf. So this is about being present now and not just focusing on the future, being present and, and experiencing things in the now. That's what I'm getting. So those are the messages that came through for you, Pisces. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back, and so do I. Take care. All right, just as a little um, follow-up to this, I'm going to share the cards that I'm using for this week. So we start off with the Sacred Seat Oracle, and this is for the daily, um, I mean, these are the ones that I used here. The Sacred Seat Oracle, dive into the depth of your cosmic soul, Justine Cerebrin, okay? And then these here are the um, Messages from the Mermaids by Karen Kay. Um, then I have some other cards that I'm using for the dailies. And this incl it includes these, but also Mermaids and Dolphins and Magical Creatures of the Sea. Then I'm using... Um, the Tarot of Dreams by Cyril Marchetti. Marchetti. And then, like I used for this reading, The Mermaid Tarot by Lisa Robinson, Robertson. And finally, I'm using the Sea Soul Journeys Oracle Cards. Connect with the healing power of the ocean. So this is the theme for this week's dailies. Please check them out. And um, any questions you have about the cards, just put them in the comments. Any questions that you have about mermaid guidance, um, put it in the comments and I'll try to answer those. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please, please, please subscribe. And remember, the universe has your back and so do I. Take care.